because ETS wanted to do that for the sake of them having a test and having something that can be used by people all over without giving advantage to people who know a specific language. So we already looked at the, uh, the chat that they have at, on the ETS website, you'll find the whole document. But here we picked the first six. On Wednesday, we did the first five, but I added the string uh, concatenation for this meeting. And the reason why, uh, why we, we put that one is because you need to have a few more examples uh, and also seeing the difference between the plus and the concatenation. But this is, uh, this is what we're doing. There are a few more that we will look at uh, the next time we do pseudocode. All right, so we talked about assignment. Uh, those of you who do programming, you know usually the assignment is the equal symbol. But with the, uh, but with, uh, with the pseudocode for ETS, they use that arrow. That's a full arrow where they say you assign something from the right to the left. And where are you putting it in the left? You're putting it in a container or in a, in a box somewhere. And that really, it's a representative of a memory space. So you take uh, something, you use the arrow, you're putting it in there. So we say we are, you're assigning it into that uh, space or whatever you have there. And then, uh, so I'm showing you another example still the same thing. Now we had five, now we have nine, and we are taking nine and putting it in basket two. There is a reason why I have basket one and basket two, because if I took the nine and put it in basket one, whatever was in basket one will be overwritten by what we just put in there, because it's memory space. If we save something on top, then it will be overwritten. And then on basket three, we have a three, so is that clear so far? All right, thank you. So there, there are your baskets, basket one, two, and three. Uh, and you have the, uh, the values from your right going into those baskets. So now let's manipulate them and see what's going to happen. So if we have, if we ask you to print basket one, basket two, basket three, what outputs would you have? Open your mics and just give us the answer. Gina, you're awake. <laughs> what is going to go into basket one? I was unmuting my microphone. Um, basket one would be five. All right, who's next for basket two? Basket two would be nine. Nine, and basket three? Three. Six. Yes. Last so time. that yeah, yeah. Thank you. So this this these are just uh, simple ways of uh, taking the same information that was put in the basket, and instead of using the number over and over again, you use a variable. That way, you, you don't have a typo because sometimes you might want to be typing the number and you make a mistake. So usually, when you put things in variable, it just helps you not to make. Uh, mistakes when you're programming. So on the next side, we would have basket one would print 20 and basket two would print 15 and basket three would print 60. So let's look at another example. So that's all there is about uh, the assignment. So you just need to know that that's how they use to put things into, va uh, into variable. That's how uh, ETS uses uh, the, the operator to put things into, into, uh, into a basket. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the arithmetic operators. And these look exactly like you see in math. The first four, we have the plus, we have the minus, we have division, and, ha and we have multiplication. Then the carrot, that is uh, sent to the power. And then we have the percent, which is called modulus. And we talked about that last time, but we will go through it uh, one more time. So when you're doing uh, addition and subtraction and division and multiplication and raising something to the power, those work exactly as you do 
in regular math. But when it comes to the modular, and, and you will see sometimes it's called mod, M-O-D-E, all you're having is the remainder. So it's, uh, you're going to take two values and you mod them, and the answer that you get is the remainder. That's what mod is used for. It's used uh, quite a bit in programming when you're tr trying to find whether things are odd or they are even. And the reason why is because you're dealing with zeros and ones. So if you mod something and the remainder was zero, then you know it's odd. And if there was a certain uh, remainder, let's say a one, then you know it's, uh, I, I, I mean, when it's a one, then it's odd. And it's, if it's a zero, then you know it's even, there was no remainder. And this is how, uh, this is the order in which you do them. So you, uh, if you have um, a statement, and that's what we call a line that you need to evaluate, we call it a statement, you would start with the power, then you do the multiplication, the divisions, and the mod right to left, and the same thing with additions and the subtraction. I mean, left to right and uh, the operation left to right, just like you do it in, in math. Sorry about that, not left to right. Okay, let's go here and have an example. So we have our numbers in our basket. We have in basket one, we have our 12. In basket two, we have our four. And in basket three, it contains a seven. So if I ask you to print a basket, just any basket here that I'm going to ask you to, uh, to print in that basket, and I, and I tell you uh, that you have basket one, which is 12. Here, I'm going to point. Let me get my point over here. So we have this basket one here has 12. And then we're going to add to that four. And then we'll add to that seven. What, what will basket contain? 23. 23, yes. And the next one we are going to have basket. And now we are going to, di uh, to divide uh, the 12 by four and we get three. So at the end, if you are working through this, at the end, you know that whatever was in the first basket has, over, has been overwritten by the next answer. So the basket here had 23, but the basket here has a three. And the last one, we are actually now changing the value of basket three by doing uh, this operation using these two statements, we're going to change the value of three. So we are going to take four multiplied by three. So the new value of three is going to be 12. Is everybody with me right now? Are you sure about that? Uh, uh, four times, uh, it's two is four times, oh, 21. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Twenty-eight. Thank you. Oh, Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Okay. Seven times four. Uh, seven times four is twenty-eight. Sorry about that. No worries. I got my motivation <laughs> left behind somewhere. Yeah, four times seven, twenty-eight. So we have overwritten the seven that was in the in basket three. Are we all together? Did I confuse somebody? Any questions? All right, Gina, thanks for keeping me up. All right, now let's do this one. Now I want you to, uh, to look through this section with me and then you do this section by yourself and put the answer in the chat room, okay? So here we have box contains six and then we are going to minus four and we, we get a two. So what's gonna happen here? So do this one and put, put the answer in the chat box and I will be looking to see as you put them in. Is that everybody? 
All right, everybody got it. Any questions about that? Oh, I see one message. Let's see. No, thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. The next oper operation that we're going to learn about is the Boolean value. And the Boolean just takes true or false. So it takes two different values and evaluates them and at the end you have either a true or a false depending with the value of uh de depending with, with the values that you have so from here so did everybody get that boolean is used to evaluate whether values of an items are true or false boolean is declared to evaluate values of items and the answer of evaluation is stored in the Boolean. All right. So here, for us to understand what, what, what are we talking about Boolean and why did we use some int? We refer to the data types. So we have eight primitive data types. What that means is when you declare, and by declaring, I mean when you type, any of this data type, the computer knows exactly how much memory you want to reserve to be used by the variable that you're going, to, uh, that you're declaring. So when you type Boolean, it knows that you're going to store true or false. If you declare a char, it knows that you're going to be storing uh, any characters in the, in the keyboard any of those characters, the, alpha, uh, the alphabet, A, B, C, Ds, all the commas and all those, those are all characters and they are stored in there. Byte, we don't use byte very much. It's maybe in very small computer, handheld toys and things like that. They might use bytes, but we don't use it that much in programming as much. Uh, and that is just eight bits. Then we have short, and then we have integer and we have long. So from three to six, those are our whole numbers data types. So that means when we declare the numbers and we put those numbers there, they do not have any decimals. So the byte, the short, the integer and the long. And the reason I put the int there is because you will find out that most uh, and usually you will find that we use int. We don't type integer. All the others, we type them in full, but for integer, since it's used so much that the most programmers who created programming languages, they just used int. So that's why you'll be seeing it more often. So three byte, short, integer, and long, those store whole numbers and float, and double store uh, numbers with decimals. And they are very, very important that you know in some scientific calculations uh, having the precision, and that's why they have the difference between a double and a float is so important. Like if you're calculating like medical things and all that's how much it will flow, you need to have that number uh, precise. That's why we have a, a float is a little, uh, uh, it stores fewer numbers than double in the precision. That's all that is. Any questions? I did a lot of talking there. Any questions here? You got a good question here about, she said, do they have no decimals even if the answer's got a decimal? I'm sorry? Does it have no decimals? even if the answer has a decimal. If, if, that does, if an answer has a decimal, then it's truncated. That means it's dropped. You will find that that's what we use in computer science that we say, if you divide a seven divided by three, uh, you would find that it will be, uh, it will be what? It will be maybe two. two. Go ahead. Somebody was gonna answer. Mm. Two and a remainder of some sort. Yeah. That remainder, if you're, if you're putting it in a byte, short, int, or long, 
that remainder is not going to be uh, to be an acknowledged. It's just going to be thrown, uh, cut away, which we call tr uh, truncating. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? Boolean is a result of comparison, and it's also a data type. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it is a data type because we keep things in, uh, we declare things that are Boolean, so we know that our answers are going to be, uh, to be true or false. But, um, but you also use it to come uh, to compare things, and that's the only way you answer things is you will look at if something is true or false. Does that does that make sense to? Everybody? All right. Okay, so here are examples of Boolean. So we see here our Boolean is our data type here. So we know whatever happens here, we are going to, uh, to store our answer as a Boolean. So we assign is raining is true. And then we assign, if you remember that arrow means assigning. So we are telling this variable. So is raining is a variable. And we are, we are saying that that variable is true. And then we are saying, I walk, that variable is false. So if we say print is raining, what's the answer? Say it or type it. Yep, I see some people putting a T and that's true. Uh, who said true or false? Oh, you're saying both answers, okay. All right, yeah, the first answer is going to be true and the second one is going to be false. And just writing a T means the same thing. So the next operator that we look at is the relational operators. And this one's just like that word uh, says relational means a relationship. We are looking at two values or two variables or two, uh, whatever we are looking at, two variables, two uh, expressions, two values. We are looking to see whether the operator we've assigned them is, uh, uh, the operator we are using between them is evaluating uh, whether the thing is true or false. So again, here, we are going to look at this, uh, these values, whether they're true or false. So let's have a look at the first one here. When we have two equals, that means equal. Equal, equal means equal. Then that one, just like in math, less than, greater than, less than, all equal, greater than, all equal, and this one is not equal. So that's how we use those symbols in relational operators. Okay, so here are some examples of relational operators showing these symbols. So we are saying, S is equal to R, not in any, uh, not, don't think of them as having values. Right now we just have two letters, just look at two letters and we're just using them as example. Uh, S and R are equal and that's the way we read it. And we would read S is less than R, S is greater than R, S is not equal to R, S is less than, is the same as being written S is less than or equal to R. So you can, another way of writing it is this way, but you find it in a lot of programming languages, it's written that way. And, and because on your keyboard, you really don't have the line under your, uh, your, uh, your less than, then you write it this way when you're typing your program, or less is greater than. So this, this is just an example of showing, uh, of showing how we use them. So let's do some evaluation. So now we give 
those letters, we give them numbers. So uh, is six equal, equal to nine? All. And, you, and here you can just read it. We'll, we'll do some calculation. Six less than nine? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> true, it will be true. Uh, six greater than nine? False. Six not equal to nine? True. True. Six less than all equal to nine. True. True. Somebody else help Gina. Six greater than or equal to nine. False. 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 I like the down thumbs and the up thumbs. Thank you for that. And we, we have it here for you. So if, uh, and if you're looking at them and you're wondering what are we talking about, please stop us and we will answer them for you. So this is, uh, this is where we put the answers. Six is, six, uh, six is equal, equals to nine. That is not correct. <laughs> Oops, where did I go? Six is not equal, equal to nine. Six is less than, so the first one here is false. Diane, do you have access to edit it right now? Sure, you wanna fix it right now? <laughs> let's do sure. it yes let's fix it right now we don't want to leave anybody with that no uh -huh. what slide are we on let's see mm, maybe about seven eight twenty two it, it, it's wow we've gone that far it's evaluating relational operators the results of all right let's see where am i now uh which one are we fixing here the, the one that one. the very ah, is got it sorry yes. i'm doing something else i wasn't sorry yeah. about that yeah six is not uh equal to nine no not not in this world <laughs> All right. yay found one okay it's fixed okay but when, I, when i when you look at your uh your material it will be updated mine is in uh in presentation so it won't reflect straight away but it will reflect in everybody else's and everything else is correct so a uh, nine is uh, six is less than or equal to nine we are using that or and we'll talk about it shortly that is true and it's great uh, six is greater or equal to nine that is false okay so try this this is for you to try and then as soon as you're done put your answers right there in, in the chat room. So take a moment to, to do this one. And when you're done, right by, uh, by your names over there, there's the thumbs up or thumbs down and all that. All right, they're coming. One person has done two. And if you, you, you're you gonna wait for us to do it together, that is fine too. But if you want to try, that's good too. All right. Uh, Mr. Topper, is it okay if I ask you to give us your answers since you finished very quickly? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. I got uh, S does not equal R false, T E does not equal. Do you, do you uh, mind just saying it out? Just saying it Sure. Five, yeah. Okay. So I got have... false, 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 true, true, false, true, false. All right. What I meant is say five is not oh, equal. Five to is not equal to, or uh, oh, eight is not eight. equal to five. Uh huh. And uh, 12 is eight. not equal to eight. Eight is not less than or equal to five. Uh, true, eight does not equal five. 
Okay. And true, 8 does not equal 12. Mm -hmm. uh, 8 is not greater than or equal to, or 8 is greater than or equal to 5, so that's true. Yes, that's true. Uh, 12 is greater than 8, which is true, and 8 is not greater, or is not less than R. Yeah. Because R is 5. Very good. You, you got some clapping hands. Uh, <laughs> And anybody confused with how he was getting those? Those of you who had only one or two answers, if you have a question, this is the time. It is a safe place. We are here to learn and make mistakes. So if you have, uh, if you have a question, let me know. All right, I was trying to read to see what was there. So we do have the next slide that does have the answers there for you. So you, uh, you can evaluate those whenever you're home. So we've talked a little bit, take a quick breather and we're going to do something different. Logical operators, these ones don't have math, they, uh, their pluses or the minus or all that. So little breather. And now let's go for logical operators. Logical operators use the words and, or, and not. And when you have two conditions and you have an and between them, you're going to again do a Boolean evaluation. That's why Boolean is so important to understand. Here the Boolean evaluation is true if condition one and condition two are true otherwise it's false and the R condition condition one or condition two here the boolean evaluate is true without a d <laughs> if either or both conditions are true and yield false if both conditions are false and the not condition is flipped to the opposite so if you had a, a value was true it flips to not true. And the best way visually, uh, those of you who are here on Wednesday with me, you had somebody say, let's do those in uh, truth tables. And this is how those truth tables look like. Just think of the P, the Q, as any value that you could have there. You could have A, B, T, Q, box, whatever you have. So if they are both true and you have an and between them, then you will get a true. But as long as either of them is false, if you have either of them as false, your answers then will be false. Oops, will be false. So that's how a truth table evaluates those. And sometimes you, if you look at a truth table, table if you say oh she was talking about truth table let me google a truth table and you find that zeros and ones it means the same thing it's the on and off zero and one so if they have one and one the answer will be one but all the other zero and one one and zero zero and zero will all be zeros and they will be false so just in case you look up truth tables and you find zeros and ones, it's the same thing. You can use zeros and ones, all true and false, okay? Now let's look at the R table. It means as long as one of them is true, your answers will be true. So true and true is going to yield true. False and true is going to yield uh, true. For a uh, true and false is going to yield true, but false and false is going to yield false. So that is how our R table looks like. Okay, here is uh, the not truth table. And what I did here is put the blue so you see it takes whatever value was true and flips it to false. 
So here we are just flipping each one because you'll take that value and look at it and whatever, because not usually goes before a value, before a variable and whatever is in there, that's what is being flipped. All right, I, I see a couple of discussion going on on the chat. So let's look at that. Diane, did you answer the questions? There's no questions. We're good. Okay. I was just narrating as I went. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, do those two tables make sense or did they confuse anyone? Okay. Now, having looked at that information, let's go ahead and see if we can answer this question. So we have our P assigned true, our Q assigned false, and our R assigned true. So what is going to print if we have true and false? Any here answers? We said with and, they all have to be true for the answer to be true. Otherwise, oh, I see the answers coming. All right. So true and false is going to be false. Okay. P or Q. As long as one is true, the answer is true. So P is true, so P or Q is going to give us true. And then we have R and Q. R is true, Q is false, so the answer is, somebody say. Oh, I see people answering. Good work, good work, yeah, it's false. So then when we have Q, which is false, or not P. So what we are doing here, we are negating that P. It was true, but now we are going to make it false. So now we have false or false. What is our answer? False or false is false. Yeah, Thomas, I saw that answer. Good. All right. Not R, which is uh, so our R becomes false, or P. So not R also, the R now becomes what? False, and P is true. So the answer is true. We got that? Any confusion so far? All right. Let's go ahead, go ahead and try six and seven. And put your answers there for six and seven. Good, good, good. So not P, that means P becomes a false. So false and R is true, so false and true becomes false. Very good. And then we have seven and seven is telling us not Q. So Q was false, now it becomes true. So not uh, false is true and not P, which becomes false. So the answer is false. So both of them are false. So now let's look at this. I need to move everybody up my screen over there to somewhere else i'm sorry you can all right there at the bottom all right number eight in number eight we have things in brackets so we have to work the things in the bracket so in number eight we are going to take the inner brackets first so p and q so we have true and false so that becomes false and then we change that false so that becomes true all right is that making sense and then so now we have true on that side and then the next one we have not p that means p now is false or not q 
and, and now uh, Q becomes uh, true. So we have false or true, and that is true. So we had a true and a true. So our answer is, did everybody get that? And we have an explanation in the next, in the next slide. Thank you, Tafis, and everybody else putting their thumbs up. All right. Then number nine, we do the same thing. We start with the inside bracket, P or Q. We know that that is going to give us, because it's an R and one of them was true, that's going to give us true, but then we negate it. So now we have an F. Uh, I should have been doing this. This is what I should have been doing. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Where is that thing? All right. So now here we have uh, we have an F because we had P or Q, uh, and that was true. And then we negated it, so this side now has become an F. And then here we it's telling us they are not equal. So here, let's look at this. F uh, P becomes uh, F. Oops, if I can draw it properly. Sorry. What's happening? Oops. Let's erase this. I don't know where the, what's uh, thought it would work better, but it didn't. So sorry for confusing people. It's not erasing. This becomes um, here, P becomes an F. P becomes an F and Q, here not Q becomes true. So F and T makes us, uh, makes an what? An F. So we have false on that side and we have false on that side. And then it's saying false and false are not true. The answer is what? All right, those two, number nine and 10, are a little difficult to follow over there. So let's go over here and make it easier. Where's the explanation? Yeah, here's the explanation. Oops, one more. Here is the explanation. All right, here we go. So not true. So this side becomes not true. Where is the eraser? Let's delete those Fs. So here, let's look at it one more time. Here, P or Q, we know that P was true and Q was, uh, was false. So this whole thing here had evaluated true and then we negate it. That means we have a false. And if uh, we have a false now here, and then it says it's not false. So false is not false. The answer is false. 